Hello everyone and welcome back to another one of Headwaters Science Institute's Monday Lessons. During this three-week series we're going to be using animal cameras you can find on the internet to take a look at some really cool animals. I know not everyone has the same access to neat nature like I do, so we're going to be using these cameras we can find on the internet to take an up-close look at some really cool animals and help us understand how they act and why they do the things they do. Let's take a closer look at today's schedule. Today, we are going to learn about animal behavior and how scientists study it. Over the next three weeks, you will learn how to study animal behavior and graph the data you collected about these animals. Before we get too far along in today's lesson, let's talk about what is animal behavior. Animal behavior is what animals do or how they interact with their environment. A scientist who studies animal behavior is called a behavioral ecologist. They do experiments and observe animal behavior to understand what they do and why they're doing it. We are all going to be behavioral ecologists over the next few weeks by watching animals and collecting data on what they're doing. Our job as behavioral ecologists is to try to figure out why do animals do these things and what determines when they do each behavior. Let's learn more about how we can make observations about these behaviors to try and answer some of these questions. What are the different types of behaviors an animal could do? I want you to list out the types of behaviors you think animals might do on your worksheet. You can pause this video for a minute while you work and restart once you're done. Here is a list of common animal behaviors I came up with. The first one is eating or drinking. Just like you and I, animals need to eat and drink to stay alive. The next one is hunting or foraging, which is looking for food. Unlike you and I, animals don't have a grocery store or a refrigerator to go to to find food. They have to search it out. The next thing is fighting. Some, but not all types of animals, will tussle between one another as they fight over territory or mates. The next thing is raising young. Different types of animals give different levels of parental care, and we might see a mom animal taking care of their youngs. Another thing that animals could do is they could make a nest or a den. This is somewhat rare, but still something they do. Birds are very common nest makers. Another thing we could see animals do is cleaning or preening themselves. Preening is when birds take care of their feathers. Animals don't have showers like we do, and so they need to take time to keep themselves clean. The last three things are kind of similar and hard to tell apart. An animal might hide so it doesn't get eaten. It could also be staying still because it's warming up or cooling off. Imagine a hot lion that's lying in a cool puddle of water on a hot day. This lion might look like it's sleeping, but really it's trying to cool off in the water or shade. The last thing is resting or sleeping. Just like us, animals can't run around all day and need to take some time to rest or sleep. We often see a lot of this, but it's important to think if this animal is also hiding or warming up or cooling down. The most common way to study animals is by watching them. However, since many of us are stuck at home, it can be hard to see lots of different types of animals. Many of us might be able to see a squirrel or a bird in our backyard. It can be cool to look at different types of animals from all around the world. 
One way we can do this is with animal cameras. Here are two examples of animal cams. On the left is a picture of an eagle with a baby eaglet that it is feeding. And on the right is an elephant drinking at a watering hole in Africa. There are many cameras out in nature streaming animal behavior on the internet where we can watch animals from all over the world. A great resource for these animal cameras is explore.org, where there are many types of animal cameras you can watch. We've included a link in the description of this video to some of the great animal cameras you can watch. One thing to pay attention to is whether or not the video is live or a highlight reel of some of the common animal behaviors. Make sure the video says live in the bottom left of the screen. Another thing to keep in mind is that some of the videos on this website are at zoos. None of the ones that we have linked are at zoos, but you might be able to find a zoo animal. We only want to watch animals that are in the wild because their behavior is different from ones found in zoos. The last thing to keep in mind is that it might be a different time zone from where you are to where your animal is. Right now, it's the daytime where I live in California, but it's nighttime at some of the animal cams in Africa. I can still look for animals there, and there are many animals out at night, but it just might be a little bit darker. Before we go too far into this, we need to plan out how we are going to use these animal cameras to study animal behavior and answer our guiding question of why do animals do the things they do. We need to come up with a plan for how to turn what we see into usable data that can help us answer our question. One way scientists collect data on animal behavior is by making observations with a checklist. They watch an animal or a location for a set amount of time and make tally marks each time they observe an animal behavior. We've included a checklist like that in the worksheet for today. Here are some simple instructions for how you can do your experiment. Number one is to write down the location of your camera. Then you're gonna watch your camera for five minutes you can use a stopwatch or timer to measure out these five minutes. Every time you see an animal doing the behavior, write down what type of animal that is and put a tally mark next to the type of behavior it's doing. Every new type of animal you see should get its own row, even if you're in the same five minute session of data collection. If you see one animal that's doing the same thing like sleeping for a long time, you can add an extra tally mark for every 30 seconds you see that animal doing the same thing. Let's take a look. Here is an example of what your data collection could look like. On the left, we can see we're at the Oliphants River webcam, and the animal that we have here is a brush buck. It's like a small antelope. You can see over here, it looks like it's resting or sleeping. So we can put a tally mark right there. Notice how we have it highlighted um, the hiding, warming, cooling, and resting or sleeping sections. I highlighted these because these all might look similar and it's important to look carefully to try and figure out which one is which. Another thing we can do is to turn up the volume on the webcam so we can hear what's going on. Let's do that now. You can hear all sorts of insects and birds in the background. We could write Oliphant's River in here and add a lion during our same one. If this lion was eating or drinking water, we could put a tally mark there. If we saw it stalking the brush buck, 
we could put another tally mark there. We'll continue this for the rest of our five minutes. Because the bush brush is still resting, we'll put another tally mark next to it there. As you can see, it's nighttime in Africa, even though it's daytime here. Sometimes it can be interesting to see what different types of animals are doing at different days. Your homework for this week is to make observations using these animal cams. You should make five to 10 observations of an animal cam. Remember, each, each observation should be five minutes straight of one animal cam. Make sure to write down all your data on your data sheet and we'll see you back here next week. Nice job everyone. I can't wait to spend the next week looking at these animal cams to try and figure out why animals do all these things that they do. We'll see you back here next week.